Welcome to Beyond the Looking Glass show with Ravana 9000, Tammy Pepperman and Patty Walkenturtle. You are listening to thesechangingtimesradio.ning.com. It's just it's the same thing that you were just saying, you know, you can't re- you can't rebuild or build a new one until you've destroyed the old one. I mean, that's part of the operating plan. Well, that's a requirement for emergency management. A lot of people um you see emergency management or states of emergencies is fixing the roads or whatever else. They have to give you the appearance that they're doing this so that you consent with them and allow them um, to manipulate you with psychology and medicine. So you're, um, what it is is it's through the international classification of diseases, disorders, and injuries, and um, they require that diagnosis. So if you're injured in a flood or, or whatever, that's part of that. But, but um, the emergency management is actually um, states of emergency like mental health, psychology, criminalization, um, everything else, and the, the way that you implicate that is to diagnose people having been injured. Okay, so you're depressed, you're um, schizophrenic now, you know, why you're disassociating, you're, you're looking at your your um, country and your, your um, laws and everything else that are preying on you instead of being the father or conducive to... Um, patriotism and all of a sudden you feel depressed well you're being pressed down upon too depressed means you're being pressed down upon um disassociation and schizophrenia is caused by it's called cognitive dissonance you don't want to see this you know the minute you see a politician raping a child or or you find out that uh you know the family court is just a bunch of pedophiles um you, you shut down you disassociate and so um i mean that's reacted or uh, or, uh, uh a predictable response or reaction so you run right out and you get diagnosed you get on these medications that's what they require under the first and second welfare theorem you have to be drugged up so that they can get at the kids you have to be drugged up um you know it, this whole thing is sick and and uh but we're doing really well we're indicting them we we recently put out um a fee schedule you know our fee schedule is actually a, it's more painful for them now to injure us than it is for them to injure us. You know, um, taking us into court, they're making $33 billion per case. Um, that's per case, per QCIP number. And so what you want to do is you want to charge them accordingly. You know, introduce a fee schedule. Say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of running from you. I, I am so tired of running from you. I, I understand that you want a contract, so here's the contract. This is my fee schedule. If you would like to come up against me, it's going to cost you $33 billion. And just, you know, stop them in their tracks. Not, you know, you, you don't want to just indict them. You want to ring them through the damn ringer for what they're doing, for what they're doing yep. to the families, what they're doing to the children, what they're doing to parents all over. Um, and, and off color, I mean, this society just makes me so sick because you have a whole bunch of middle class white individuals now that are just now being harmed, but they did not see it when it was happening to the off color individuals. They did not see it when it was happening to the blacks. They did not see it when it was happening to the Mexicans that are in this country. Now they're seeing it. But this is in selfishness. We all need to come together right now and combat this as one. Our whole society, they rely on us. This is our requirement to save humanity. We can't take any much much more of this, you know? Right, right. It's sick. Did you see the news article that came out from England? Uh, End-of-life care plans for newborn babies that have, you know, congenital disorders or whatever. And basically, they just starve them for 10 days and they die. Absolutely, and they've been they've been doing this it, all along. Um, they have, you know, you you hear the statistics brought out by the the Department of Health and Human Services. It says uh, what fifteen hundred children are being killed each year by their parents. Twelve hundred of those are being killed by their mothers each each year. The definition of child is is one that is le- uh, over one year old. They don't talk about the neo uh, uh, neonaticide or infanticide. They don't talk about these things. There's 35,000 35, babies being murdered in this country every single year. And well, they here's do a, not notate that. Here's another statistic. How about 785,000 black babies aborted every year in the United States? Or Absolutely. last year, I should say. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is to the first and second welfare theorem. This is, um, what's her name? Uh, Planned Parenthood. God, she was crazy. Hitler took her advice. Hitler took her advice. We, we, we need Singer. to wake up. Yes, Margaret Singer. She was just, she was a most foul individual. And here she is presenting as she's like a female. She was not a female. She was a dyke. She has no human compassion, absolutely no humanity in, within her at all. And Hitler took her advice. He implicated part of her structurized thinking. And that's the kind of person they have, regardless of sexuality. That's the kind of, kind of person they have the, the, to, to take these children. They're, they're monsters. They're embittered souls, you know. They absolutely. Prefer, they Only, the psychopath. The Only the psychopath can view another human as an object. And we're yeah. dealing with a society full of created psychopaths that are taught me, 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 and within specialization. Feminism preys on females, children, and males. Feminism teaches these dyke females that they are no thing unless they earn the right to be. So they have to objectify. They have to objectify themselves. They have to objectify other human beings. And they're earning the right to be. They have all these things. They have all these collections of, of cars and, and nice things in their home. They have nothing inside of them. They're absolutely psychopathic. This, this is founded on the research. They did the research in, in North Korea. That was the model ground for, for socialized psychopathy. You have the Korea, uh, Illinois project. That they implicated in, in Babel itself. Illinois is, is maintained as Babel. You know, these people are being taught dog eat dog and keeping up with the Joneses. That type of thinking creates the psychopathic intent. Well, you have to start all the way back with public education and the fact that, you know, most people don't, you know, get a decent babysitter and don't sit with their kids. They just stick them in front of a TV, give them video games, blah, 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 all that. There's no real parental input most of the time. And when that happens, the, the society and the surroundings breeds because you have to do it. You have to become it to survive psychopaths and sociopaths. I Absolutely. Mean, and that, that is the parental influence. Television programming. Television programming is the new parent. This is prescriptive and predictive programming. They tell you. It is programming. Prescriptive programming comes when the child is diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. You put them on drugs, and then they're more receptive to television programming. Mom is doped up, according to the first and second welfare theorem. She is completely uh, obliterated of all thought. She's on Seroquel and, and uh, all these um, different medications, and then she's, she's uh, more conducive to accepting television programming. Do you have a website, Tammy, that people can go to and find out more about your work? Um, we teach on, on Skype. We have Skype classes that run 24-7. Um, they have me listed over on uh, Solutions for the Innocent. We've got the drop boxes now. Um, we just put out like 12 more uh, um, hours of audio, and then uh, I just now got back the... Um, transcript of those audios so i'm uh, i'll release that in the classes soon and and um the book's coming out dave's almost done with the book and uh it, we're calling it the travel guide i thought that was it was quite uh beautiful he came up with that and and um but uh yeah i'm we're available all the time uh recently i had a bout with illness or something but uh most of the time i'm, <laughs> I'm more up to par but um I think we're doing really well uh, indicting them and stopping this process. You know, that the equitable estoppel is, is so amazing um, with, you know, getting us out of the court system, getting us out of um, IRS issues, indicting them, uh, you know, and, and the fee schedule. That I mean, when we came up with the fee schedule, it was like, oh, my gosh, because it, it stops it. If somebody is paid to harm you or paid to injure you or put you into law, um, charge them more than what they'd make by putting you into law. You know, hurt their pocketbook. Stop taking this crap. So, okay, talking about the fee schedule, um, well, do you, gonna, how do you have that stuff? That, is it like, you know, if you stop me, it's going to be this much. If you question me, it's this much. If it's this much time, it's this much time. Yeah, we went beyond that, and um, our our fee schedule, it was actually a notice of fee schedule and intent, so we had that legislated. 
Um, we have that legislated by quorum, so it becomes law. And what we did was in the fee schedule, we, we said we're more than willing to contract with you if you'd like to injure me, um, you know, bring me into court. My court appearances, if I have to appear in court, it's going to cost you $33 billion. And, um, you know, it, it, it's quite the thing because we've already had one attorney that came in and, and uh, we didn't put it on the court record. The attorney did, and he begged and begged the judge to strike it. And, um, you know, that that's hilarious. He can't take it off of public record because it was already legislated. And so we ran him in there because he had injured us. So it's like, um, you know, uh, it, it's it's been an interesting journey. It has been an interesting journey. Well, I'm going to shoot off. Um, thanks for sharing your information with, you, with us. And um, good to meet you. Good talking to you. All the best now. Oh, be well. I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks for hanging out for a bit, Patrick. Have a good one. Thank you, Ravana. Thanks, Patty. Good night. Good night. Um, so, let me see here. <clears throat> Why don't you, for the people listening... Oh, I want to throw this out here. Um, if you're going to be listening on you, watching on YouTube, you can probably find this in a couple of days on YouTube with Bone Nose Entertainment. So go and follow him. He puts out some great information. And uh, how are you, Patty? I am trying to find my mute button. <laughs> <laughs> I have a cat on my lap, and the cat is on my mute button. So I had to get him off of my mute button. I'm doing well, and it, I just wanted to say that it is wonderful to have you on. And uh, we did miss about nine and a half minutes. I didn't realize that uh, the uh, encoder had kicked off. And so sorry about that, but we'll extend the show uh, nine and a half minutes. So we'll get a full two hours on. And mostly uh, the beginning of it was mostly introduction and such. So hopefully we didn't lose too much there. Awesome. I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, okay, so for the listeners, why don't you, Tammy just run through what you've gone through so far with uh, uh, just explain the forgiveness document and some of the other things that you've been doing and kind of bring people up to speed. Does that work? Sure. Um, what you want to do is, um, you know, you, you have to start back with your birth certificate. You are a franchise of the United States Incorporated. Um, what they're doing is they're, they've set up an executor for you. That is a judge. That is your executor. Um, you, when you're charged with a crime or quote crime, that's not really a crime, like running through a stop sign or or um, drug abuse or whatever else. What's happening is your executor is in there and he's protecting you from you. So you will get fined and feed and charged and all this stuff. And and um, what you're doing is you're going into court and you're paying your executor to protect you in these manners. He's telling you don't run through the stop sign because you can harm yourself at some future date. And um, so you pay your fine to the executor. Well, what we've done is the forgiveness stock obliterates that franchise, the United States Incorporated franchise, and it, and it brings you back to a whole state. So you're no longer asking them to represent you. You're no longer asking for a representative. Um, you're no longer asking for an executor. And at this point, you no longer have a trustee over your estate. You become the heir. <clears throat> well, to maintain that estate, you're going to have to come in and appoint yourself as the executor, or you can appoint your loved one or, or whatever you need to do. But we're pulling that out of the court process. And at this point in time, you need to design or use our fee schedule. You can design your own fee schedule because the, the premise of the fee schedule is that you're determining now your own value. You're no longer allowing a pimp to determine your value or or somebody that's profiting off of, off of you being protected to death. And so um, you want to do that. Part of our fee schedule, and, and the, the most exciting for me, <clears throat> was the transgressor fees. If they would like to transgress upon us, um, they're more than welcome to do that. And the, the fees for transgression start at the weight of the transgressor in gold. And so this, this makes it a little bit rough on these privateers, which are police, uh, law enforcement, code enforcement, um, courts and everything else. They're legal pirates. 
um, what this is called is privateering. And so in the action of privateering, I'm willing to allow them onto my vessel, but they're going to have to pay me pay me um, some hefty fees in order to do that. If they'd like to administer me through the court process, they're more than welcome to do that now, but they're going to pay my fees. And it doesn't go to a pimp. It doesn't go to anybody other than my executor. Um, great point, and I wanted to bring this up. Privateers, privateering. That's a historical term. Where does it come from? It comes from letters of mark. Letter of Mark and Reprisal was issued to a ship captain in order to inflict damage and take booty, provided he pre presented a percentage of it to the crown against enemy vessels at sea. And, and that's why it's under maritime law, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, and, uh, I'll read the one off of Wiki because it, I, I think it's the most profound. Um, in the days of fighting sail, a letter of marquee and reprisal was a government license authorizing a person known as a privateer to attack and capture enemy vessels and bring them before admiralty courts for condemnation and sale. So what you're doing is you get a letter from the sheriff and he says, I'm going to foreclose on you and I want you going to this court for condemnation and sale and or you get a cop out there that's a government licensed privateer this is called legal piracy if there's any such term um, uh, he's going to stop you and he's going to bring you before the admiralty courts for condemnation or sale and so you're being fined for all of these things this is called privateering this is legal piracy which isn't really legal if you look under US code um, 43 U.S.C. 1068, and like I said, our fee schedule says it all. If, if they'd like to privateer upon us, it's great, $33 billion, because that's what they're making at the time of that transaction, and now I'm offering them the same option. I mean, this is their window of opportunity. This is a great time for, for doing business between myself and, and, and these corporations, and I, I have my arms wide open, and, and, uh, Time for business. Here's your window of opportunity. And that's what Dave said. Dave said on the on the side of the car now, we should put that it's a window of opportunity. If you want me to roll down my window, here's my fee schedule. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I The last time I had gotten pulled over, I actually asked the cop. I said, I'm, officer, I need to ask you a question. Are you acting under color of law? and your, your badge and letter of mark authority or are you acting under the constitution and he actually made me ask the question a second time and when he did answer he said i'm doing my job i thought that was kind of funny the uh letter of mark as a as a business person that's what uh, I said. yeah well he wrote me two tickets and yeah but letter yeah. Sorry, letter of mark, letters of marquee, they were banned or declared illegal in, I think it was 1850, everywhere Absolutely. except in the U.S. against the citizens, is my understanding. Absolutely. I have yet to actually find a good text on that, but that's that's what I heard. No, and it, and it, um, it, it clearly defined a citizen. Uh, and that's the thing that, that most people need to be aware of. I'm not a citizen. I am the United States. And when you go back to um, the 1794 Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation, it says clearly there that I am the United States. And what had happened was they began posting us. They had developed posts which are called forts or temporary post locations. And at that time, they began... Um, facilitating mail delivery, which is post office and Pony Express and all this stuff. Well, to be posted, you need to accept and use a fictitious name. At that point, you're being charged as a felon under 18 U.S.C. 1342. And so each time you, you go out and you check your mail, you're accepting things in the first, middle, and last name, which is a common name, that name does not belong to you. That is a fictional name. Your last name 
defined you as a different species of human. For example, my maiden name is Eric's son. And so what had happened is, is way back then, you know, Eric existed as a living being, but Eric's son happened to be a fiction. It was a new designation of, of what he was. And it was the same thing with Smith and, and everything else. They were designating, this is what this human does. It's a blacksmith. So it became a, a definition outside of human, and now you're a thing. You are the fiction. And so each time you use that common name, you're being held a taint as a felon under 18 U.S.C. 16, or, or sorry, 1342. Now, if somebody attempts to post you and you refuse, and you send that mail back, you need to send it back um, unacceptable mail as per um, 18 U.S.C. 1342. If they try again, they're violating the frauds and swindles under 18 U.S.C. 1341. And so you have to hold them accountable for these things. Do not accept being posted anymore. Go down and notice your, your post office of the first and middle name or the executor of the estate and, um, you know, hand them your fee schedule and let them know that you're, you're open for business and uh, they'd like to post you. They're, they're more than welcome, but they're going to pay you $33 billion to do so. Well, I'm, I'm at the point of the next time I have to talk to a cop, he's going to ask me my name and I'm going to say, I'm not a Christian. I don't have a name. I'm not a Moor. I don't have a title. So how am I supposed to... You know, what am I supposed to tell you? Are you asking me to commit felony fraud by claiming to be the corporation known as my birth certificate and what used to be my corporate franchise known as a driver's license? Because, right. no, that's not me. So Right, right. But you are the first of middle name. And, and um, recently we had so much fun with this. An attorney came into court and we had handed him our fee schedule. And he came in to argue that uh, he didn't want to post us in the first and middle name. He could not send a letter in the first and middle name. And so the mailing items had, had went, gone back to him and refused. And he came into court and asked the judge to force us to use a fiction. And we said, nah, thank you anyway, but here's your bill. You have an outstanding balance of $33 billion. Nice, nice. The last, the last thing that I actually talked to the courts about, I... Uh I sent in a notice because they had said that I had a warrant, and I said, all right, well, I sent you the the notice of the ticket and the court date back saying no contract because you had impounded my vehicle, so by actions of your agents, you have prevented me from being able to show up. I am not able to honor the contract, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, if you wish to address me further, you will address me as, you know, first and middle name, of the family of last name. And like, I think within a week, they sent me another notice of the warrant, quote unquote, which wasn't signed by anybody anyway. It just had a little stamp on the bottom. And uh, they actually had it addressed to first and middle name of the family of last name, which I thought was interesting. And it was, instead of being from the district court, it had somehow jumped to magistrate's court. So, I mean, they're, they're so criminal, they're just doing all kinds of shit. It's right, the magistrates were the original E-4s of Sparta, and so they're the ones that are directing all of it, and they're the ones with the biggest hand in the kitty there. So you need to, you need to stop them from recaptioning your case, and, and what you need to do is recaption it yourself by a writ of recaption. So you go into court and you say, nah, we're not going to play this game. And you go ahead and do the writ of recaption. And then you need to repossess the body because somehow um, somebody's sought an interest in this state, which is your body. And you need to get them out of there and the ability to do that. And um, we're having some great results with the forgiveness doc and then the executor doc because... If they try to administer that estate after you have appointed an executor, they're guilty of executor de centaur, which means the administrator of their own wrong. And so they're prevented by law from doing this. And, and the court process itself is called negotiorum gestio. And it means they're managing the affairs of another. They're doing this in a friendly manner. Like I said, as the executor, you know, he's protecting you to death from yourself. And so what you want to do is, is go through the de definitions, look in there. Negotiorum gestio only exists if you allow a negotiorum gestor, which is the attorney. 
Now, if you dissent to the negotiorum gestor, guess what happens? His fiction no longer exists. You're telling him, no, thank you anyway, I'm, I'm taking over from here. I'm not asking you to represent me. I'm not asking you for anything. You're no longer obligated to me. I'm no longer obligated to you. I have my appointed executor. Now, if you would like to do this business transaction with me, here's my fee schedule. But yep. you are not going to benefit. And you have to stand on this because you have the Federal Association of Magistrate Judges are all coming in now. They, they really want their part in this because that's Caesar. You have Caesar just seizing everything all over the place. They really, really want a piece of the action. So you really need to go after them with the executor day some tort. You need to hand them your fee schedule. You need to notice everybody of your fee schedule. That way, if they'd like to do business with us, they're more than welcome. They just need to pay the fee. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Do you, do you have a document written up to claim, uh, uh, to claim salvage on something? Like, for, okay, for example, um, my vehicle. When I originally got my vehicle, my parents purchased it for me for my trip out here. Um, they, you know, paid it with a check, whatever. But it's, you know, certificate of title is for the state of Minnesota. So how do I, because, you know, I can say it's been abandoned here for six months. I want to claim salvage on it. And I want the actual title in my name, not for the state of Minnesota. Right. What you want to do is you want to, once you do the forgiveness in the executor doc, any part of your estate or anything that's attached to it becomes yours. And so if they try or attempt to administer that, then you need to hold them accountable for that. That vehicle is then not a part of the United States in court. Um, I think we have Tammy back. Are you back with us, Tammy? Where were we? I'm not, sh I'm not sure what happened there, but go ahead, Tammy. Um, I think we were on the salvageability um, part of the executor decent tort process and, and holding them accountable for that is, um, you know, the, the myriad of things that they've done. Larceny by trick, larceny by extortion, um, uh, vexatious litigation. You, you need to just hold them accountable. And if they come after your vehicle, it's very it's not likely that they come after a vehicle at this point because of the fee schedule. They've been noticed. The Department of Energy, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Tra um, Natural Resources, the Department of Health and Human Services, we've noticed some of our fee schedule and we, we told them we're open for business. And so it's not likely um, as more and more people lay down that fee schedule and, and make sure that they're standing on it, that they're going to even come up against you. The cost outweighs the risk. You know, well, yeah, when it comes down to, you know, the person's weight in gold, um, yeah, there's not many people who can cover that. No, and you have to make sure that you're notifying each, each department, each agency. And when you're dealing with somebody out on the street, you need to ask to speak to their supervisor because a lot of the times they're just a minion and they don't have authority to contract with you. So you want to make sure that you contact the person that you notified um, in your local area or whatever. Um, in, in order for them to authorize contracting with us. Otherwise, it's a, it's a moot point and, and um, the um, minion might not be held responsible. You want to make sure that the entity is held responsible for, for privateering. Right, right. <clears throat> I don't know. The next time I actually have to talk to a cop, I'm going to make him jump through hoops. It's going to be hilarious. I hope I can film it, but I don't want to try and film him. I just want to film me fucking with him. Right, that's what they were saying the other day, you know, they looked over at me and they're like, what do you weigh anyway? And I'm like, oh my god, that is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, see, the problem in my little town is that all of the cops are related to, like, half of the people in town. And the half of the people in town that are related to are the ones that are, like, doing all the stuff that's wrong, stealing, you know, dealing drugs, whatever. And, you know, the cops ain't going to go and bust his cousin because then the whole family's mad at him. It's right. And they, they're required to, to uh, maintain um, addiction rates. So, so the drug cartels, what most people don't realize is a cartel means little charter. The local police departments, the local sheriffs, they have charters or, or contracts with the drug dealers in order to maintain addiction rates within the community because then they, they, 
you know, fault you on that when you're addicted. And people don't realize that's part of the game and part of the process. They want you addicted. This is yeah. part of the, the generation of revenue scheme. Um, most people, because of metabolism, you know, these are natural substances. Even methamphetamine is a natural substance. It's just cooked in a different manner. And what happens is we're already metabolizing these things. Goldex Elementarius and the FDA work together to, to ensure that we're already addicted. We're addicted to Soma, um, not Soma, uh, Valium and, and Xanax because we're ingesting uh, benzoate, sodium benzoate, calcium benzoate, potassium benzoate, all of these things, we're already addicted to them and they're already in our system. And so if you get caught or, or if you get picked up or anything and you submit to a drug test, um, God forbid, um, you're, you're going to test positive anyway. It's just the, the day on which they need to generate the most revenue. You're going to be testing positive to all sorts of stuff. Depends on, on the market conditions of the time. Yeah, I was on probation for two years. And the first, like, you know, 10 months didn't go so well. And then I got a new PO. And a friend of mine told me a trick. He said, uh, what was it? Take uh, ibuprofen. And tell them that you're taking ibuprofen. Because ibuprofen will screw up the results. It'll give you a false positive or whatever. So I just went in and told her that every time and she just never tested me again. It was beautiful. Right. But from now on, we're um, part of my process is obliterating the ability of probate. Probate means that somebody's interceded in your inheritance. Um, probation is a form of probate. This is all abatement of a freehold. So if you haven't done anything wrong and, and somebody's nailing or hammering on you, you need to give them a fee schedule and let them know we're, we're open for business. We're not going to um, be in probate anymore. We're not going to enter into their world of commerce unless they'd like to contract with us in PSRVs. Yep. Well, this was six years ago when I would gotten arrested for that. And, you know, I, I'm of the mindset that, you know, there's a lot of stupid laws out there. And if I am dumb and I break a law that I know is a law, like I smoke pot back home, there's no job. So I would sell weed in order to get my own weed to smoke for free. And I got busted. And, you know, hey, at the time it was illegal. It had just passed a thing through the town to decriminalize it. You'd have anything up to an ounce or whatever. But, I mean, I had more than that. And there wasn't a crime. A crime has to have a victim. And what they're right. doing is, is um, and, and that's what most people need to realize right now, today, um, crime has to have a victim and a crime has to harm somebody. The majority of the populace that is listening to me right now have never, ever, ever, ever harmed anybody. To injure is to put into law. Injure means in law. Okay, so now the, the attorneys have legalized, the attorneys have made illegal things that are to their benefit. You cannot harm a drug, but you can injure a human being and put them into law, whereby the attorneys are making money hand over fist. And so if you have not in, uh, harmed anybody, you need to indict them because what this is is privateering. They come upon your vessel in a business venture... Right, right. And they t they've condemned you and told you you're a bad boy or a bad girl, and now you're going to pay the piper. And this is the action of bail. It's it's piracy. That's why you're charged bail. That's why you're bonded out, blah, blah, blah. You need to stop thinking in those mindsets. They came upon your vessel. These are privateers. They just want to do business with you. Allow them your fee schedule. Tell right. them that that you're open for business, and if they want to contract with you, they can pay your fees. Yep. Like I said, it was six years ago, and I wasn't, uh, I had a fair amount of the knowledge that I have now, but I have learned a lot within the last year and a half or two years. I mean, trying to keep up with everything that is coming out that people are, are finding out through research on, you know, the law and going through the old congressional records and, like, some of the stuff that Rod Class is putting out. I mean, it's just fantastic information, and it's it's hard to keep up with it all, you know? I mean, I was on to some of this stuff uh, back in the early 90s, you know? I mean, I was in the Army for two years, and that kind of showed me what a piece of crap the whole world was and how rigged it was. And then I started doing research, and I got into some of this, 
but it was, you know, how do you, how do you go about applying it? How do you, you know, like now you have these, you, the documents that you're sharing with people that, that they have a form that's like, okay, I can fill this out. I can go in and take it to them. Here you go. Back then it was like, you had to literally just pull this stuff out of your ass, you know, just be talking off the top of your head and hope your bullshit worked because, you know, at that point. The cops weren't quite as criminal as they are now, I don't think. I mean, now they're they're just blatant. They just, I mean, they just plain don't care. Right, you're cutting into their... I mean, their, they just do what they're going to do. Right. Yeah. You're but cutting that, into their business venture, you know. Yeah, but back in the day, it wasn't, it wasn't, from my experience, it wasn't quite that bad. I mean, I always got busted for dumb little stuff. So it was like, oh, here, pay a fine or, you know, whatever. It never really was that big of a deal. So I never really worried about it because, you know, I had the money. It just wasn't, you know, like, okay, whatever. You know, I was speeding. Okay, here's your here's your money. Whatever. Go okay. away. That's when you were still consenting to the privateering. And now, uh, right. you know, it's very rare that somebody's consenting. So they're having to resort to, um, you know, beating people down and everything else. Well, if they have your fee schedule on file before that, I'm, I'm more than willing. You can beat me. It's just going to cost you $33 billion. Right. You, know, you can do whatever yeah. you want to. Yep. Uh, here's something else. What do you think of the whole secession thing that's going on with the uh, White House petitions? What's your opinion on that? Well, it's it's a bunch of bullshit because what they're trying to do is is take the mind back out of the Enlightenment. And, um, you know, we've been teaching about the um, Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation for a while now. And what that is is the United States was posted you are the United States of being. Before it was posted, it was all lowercase because it wasn't capitalized upon. Okay? The only way that you can capitalize on something is to make it in the uppercase. And I know that sounds crazy, but, but it's all in the words. Okay? In the Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation, it says clearly that you're being posted by the government of America and his Catholic Majesty. This is in 1794, okay, way after 1776, way after the Declaration of Independent, where you were deemed to be in a pending state, you, you required after the Declaration, someone declared that you were in a pending state perpetually, they had to administer you. And if you go into the um, uh, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 1 of the Constitution, it says you were the states. You were the states. But now they're saying that you migrated and were imported here. And so when they represent you from the United States of Being, into a name, into a fiction, into an import or something that migrated migrated here. They were calling you birds in, in Article One, Section uh, Nine, Clause One. They called you migratory and imported birds, and so you're under. It's called uh, Sixteen U.S.C. Seven. You are under Preservation Acts. They are preserving you. When you roll through a stop sign and they give you a ticket, you're being preserved just in case you might harm yourself later. Just in case. Right. So you've been requiring these services because somebody's representing you. Somebody's not telling you that you're the United States. Now, this is treason. I, I'm willing. Come on and privateer me. Come here and, and here's my vessel. As long as you want to enter into contract with me, you can do anything you want to. But this is treason. I am the United States of being. You're going to be held accountable. I'm going to suck your little coffers dry. You know, United States Incorporated is a representation of you. They took you and recreated life in, in, in another image. If that, if that rings a bell, they've done this. Every 300 years since the Bible was written, they've done this every 300 years. Right now we're in the redemption phase. You've been told all through the, the um, uh, blah, blah presidency here that we're in a recession. Nobody realizes that we're being re-seized or seized again in a recession, but they hear this every day. Thank God I'm not in a depression. What the hell? You're being seized. This is a redemption process. It's called the Jubilee. What did Oblava do? He went out and he celebrated what with the queen? 
a jubilee, and he pledged his allegiance to the kingdom of, of England. Okay, I have a question on that. So, if they declared the jubilee, then all debts are forgiven. So, fuck the banks, fuck your mortgage, screw everybody, all debts are forgiven. But, I think... What Except for theirs. And, and that's something that, that people need to be aware of. Every single day, somebody comes to me and says, compel their judicial oath. Go there. Go to, um, uh, it's 18 U.S.C., um, 18 U.S.C. 453, okay? So you have each justice of the, uh, each justice or judge of the United States shall take the following oath or affirmation before performing the duties of his office. I, blah, 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 do solemnly swear or affirm that I will administer justice without respect to persons and do equal right to the poor and to the rich, and then I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties that come upon me as blah under the Constitution and laws of the United States. So help me God. Okay, they're discharging and offsetting the bankruptcy by taking you in front of them and having you pay this off. You have to give them your fee schedule. They are discharging their duties. Do not compel the judicial oath. I don't want them to discharge their duties. I want them laid right on their shoulders. They have the duty to pay off the bankruptcy, and they have to use themselves. Not me, not my family, not my community, not, not any human being. Go ahead and have at yourselves. If you want to discharge your duties, have at each other. And that's what we're telling them now. We're, we're making a business offer. I'm a nice guy. I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not mean whatsoever. They're more than willing to conduct business with me. Here's my fee schedule. This is what it will cost you. And it might be beneficial to you to go down and finger the nearest attorney or the nearest judge because it's going to hurt your pocket if you touch me and my family. You know, I have a feeling that a judge coming to talk to you would feel like he was talking to, like, Al Capone or something. Like, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> you walk away or... This is what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's all financial. They wanted to play the game. I'm, I'm playing the game. We're right here. Come in contract with us. I'm open for business. Yep. Yep. Uh, are you familiar with Kate of Gaia? Because she's doing something that's kind of interesting, too, and it's dealing with the bond. And she's been trying several different ways to try to just get the courts and everything to leave her alone. And what she's come up with is going in and saying, all right, I want to settle the account. These are the three documents. Here's my birth certificate. It's a copy of the, uh, what is it, the performance bond, the security bond, and the payment bond. And they transfer the numbers from the birth certificate over, and then all the money is transferred, and you walk out. And I understand the difference between that and what you're doing but have you heard anything about that at all? I have. I was listening to Boris a while back as well. And what you don't want to do is, is leave the ball in their court. You're no longer asking them to represent you. You're not asking them to determine whether or not you're living or you're dead or anything else. And the birth certificate is only the docking instrument. The birth record, where the baby's footprint is, is sealed by the state. Okay, back in the old days of slavery, slaves would be chained at the ankle with a chain. Okay, now in the new day, you have a state seal that's put over the baby's foot. That becomes their property, and that baby is chained now by document. And so what you need to do is you need to come in as the executor and take that chain off its leg. You need to claim that being you need to claim the body and again remember um months ago when we were on we were talking about the father the son and the holy spirit well the father is you you're the executor the son is jesus which in latin means your earth you need to put the father and the son back together and the holy spirit is each emission or derivatives off of your production value you need to bring that back to you as well and so you don't you're not allowing them to cash in on you anymore. Once you claim sovereignty, you're a sovereign state as the United States because you're adhering to public law. Once you claim and maintain your sovereignty and you're telling them, I no longer need you to represent me, you're no longer obligated to me, I'm no longer obligated to you, you have 
that whole being back together that was separated at this separation of the spiritual and the temporal by William the first. That's what was separated. The father, the executor became somebody else. You were represented. The son, Jesus, or your earth became something else. You were represented. And all of your derivatives or emissions were collected by somebody else. Now, debt is the opposite of credit. Credit is actually your goodwill. They have been borrowing on your goodwill. And you need to pull all of that back together into one entity, which is you, and stand on that ground. When you stand on Jesus or your earth, they can no longer administer you. They can no longer do anything against you. Um, they're prevented, again, in the um, Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation from posting you. They, they, they offered you the, the, um, the right to dissent and everything else in there. Um, again, in the 1929 Geneva Convention, 1864 Geneva Convention, if you place yourself in their foundling hospitals and you allow yourself this is usually that would be soft cell censorship. Um, the um, a treaty is to cross the body of water. And so what's happening is that we're claiming all these titles. We claim the last name, first middle last name. Uh, we say, no, give me my rights, give me my rights, give me my rights. Well, the water is in you. We're, what, 80% water. And so what they're doing is they're enfranchising you in different variants. The first franchise comes with the first, middle, and last name. However, if you go out and get a business license, you're putting a copy hold through that franchise, so you're, you're enfranchising again. If you go out and get a, um, a college degree, you have another title. That's an enfranchised state, so you're drawing easements through the human body, and this, is, this comes in um, to play with the derivative. So you can derive... Uh, revenue off of this part of me, off of this part of me, and here I am a doctor, here I am a nurse, here I am a teacher. They're, they're deriving revenue off of each enfranchised state. Now, going back to treaties, that's what those are. They never, they, they allowed territory. Territory is something that's already been seized. Okay, so, so they're, they're allowing this territory, they're allowing reserves. Reserve is a, is a reservation of rights. It's not a physical location. It's a reservation of rights for somebody else. So, so then you have the is in play. Feminism, masculism, racism, Zionism, Islamism, Catholicism. You know, you have um, corporatism, environmentalism. These only change as per market conditions. So if the female holds the majority of the wealth, they are going to employ masculism. Okay, they're going to reserve the rights of the male superior to the female in order for her to go into court and buy her rights back by legal process. If the males hold the majority of the wealth across the globe, they're going to employ feminism, which is happening now. If the Catholics hold the majority of the wealth, they're going to employ Judaism. If the um, Islamic nations hold the majority of the wealth, they're going to employ Zionism. Everybody's, you know, all, all nervous and everything about the Jews and, and the Palestinians, and, and they're blaming each other. This is the UN. This is political use of political tools, Zionism and, and Islamism, but it's the same entity codifying the Middle East. These attorneys have gone in there, they implicate laws, codify um, Palestine. They were bulldozing their homes, for example, and saying, well, this place isn't up to code. What code was there before the attorneys got there? The attorneys just laid down law or, or made things legal, codified the Middle East, and said, well, we don't like this. That allows them to own the land. The holder of the law is the one that holds, owns everything. It has nothing to do with Jews, and it has nothing to do with um, Islamic individuals or Palestine itself. We need to realize the attorneys puppeting everybody. Palestinian children are being murdered in child protective services holding places and Palestinians are blaming the Jews. This is the UN. This is Congress doing this. You need to hold them accountable for what they're doing. They are raising the Middle East. They are using you against each other, just like always, just like it was here when, when the Indians were here and they sent in all the white people. They reserved the white people's rights and told them, go west, there's gold out there, go claim everything, the homesteading laws, they did the same thing in the UK with the homestead acts. 
everybody needs to realize it's the attorney. This is the board of governors. This is the right. corporate council. So and you I, need to hold them accountable and wrap the millstone around their neck so that they can't get out of it. I got a quick question. You had mentioned, uh, you know, going to college and you get a title. And I thought, hmm, that would go with the original 13th Amendment that if you are granted a title, because the university would be considered a foreign corporation, foreign nation. I'm not sure exactly. Absolutely. But that, that was the um, Acts of Enablement. That is the United States Incorporated. From 1802 through, I think it was, what, what, 1869, they were incorporated in the United States, incorporated. They did this by granting land, 200,000 acres at a time or whatever, to all these colleges, to all the hospitals. And you need to go back to that point in time because that's who owns you. You need to obliterate the birth record. You need to obliterate these franchises. When you get another title, you're doing business as. You're doing business as. You're enfranchising again. Right. So, so I can be a doctor and I'm doing business as a doctor. Well, that allows them to capitalize on the United States. Right. So, okay, the United States Incorporated from 1802 or whatever to, you said, like 1869 or something? Right. So, Those are all the acts of enablement. You want to you wanna go look up the acts of enablement, um, especially 1802. When they first began, they, they introduced the 1802 Indemnification Convention, and they established five commissions by which to hold you. These are the same five E-Force that were back in Sparta. These are the very same E-Force that were the uh, Council on Nicaea. These are the very same. All they do is, and, and, and this is the funniest part, when you're going straight through your life, you're going forward, you're be living, there's nothing interceding in your path, so you're on a mission, correct? If sure. somebody comes in and alters your heading, they do that with another mission or by commission. By changing the name on the top of the document. Absolutely. Is absolutely. So they've changed or altered your heading as a vessel in an action of piracy. You need to hold them accountable for this. My mission was never to be altered. You've been using my name in vain. You've been using my name in vain. What the hell are they doing capitalizing on me? Well, yeah, exactly. Um, I was going to say, so from 1802 to 1869 is the first incarnation of the United States Corporation. And then you have the Act of 1871, which created the government of Washington, D.C., 10 square miles, blah, blah, blah. The, which would have been the second incarnation of the corporation. And then in 19, about 33, you had the bankruptcy, the receivership. Now, when did the next form of the corporation get started? Because if it was put in the receivership in 33 with the bankruptcy, then it's my understanding that we're actually on the United States or the U.S. of A. 4 core. So we're on the fourth version of the corporation, if unless I'm mistaken. Oh. Hey, Tammy. Yeah, I'm back. I think it was us that time. Yeah, it happens. Chaos, mayhem, madness, cats Cens meeting with dogs, you know. Censorship. Yes. But, but yes. it's good. It's good. It, it always makes me feel good when they're cock blocking us. Oh, pardon my French. <laughs> it, it definitely means that we're getting to someone. I actually had a funny occurrence, it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, I uh, had called my mom, and the phone was, you know, crackling and snapping and popping and doing little whistles and everything, and my mom actually says to me, what's the matter with your phone? And I said, oh, it's just the intelligence agencies listening to me, you know, hello NSA, hello CIA, it's just my mom, no need to listen. Have a nice day now. And after about 10 seconds, the snapping and crackling and popping went away. But, yeah, it was pretty funny. that My mom actually said something to me about, what's the matter with your phone? What's that going on? Right. What did she think of after that? Did she comment on it or did it just go away in her mind? Because I know, uh, like my parents, they're just so indoctrinated that, you know, there's no getting through to them. Well, she's just, you know, she's a mom, so she was all like, 
oh, God, that's all I needed to hear, you know. Just don't get yourself in trouble, that, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Always got to be the good boy, huh? We have to earn the right to be good because something, you know, other things can't be happening. It has to be our fault, right? I mean, that's what they teach us. And then after all, we could be, should be, uh, to be, or otherwise would be something, whatever they need us to be to be more politically correct, right? No, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, th this is the thing. I did a lot of dumb stuff when I was younger, you know, and the stuff that I actually probably should have gotten caught for, no. And the, the, the little dumb things, you know, like, literally, just, I did something stupid, the cops saw it, and I got busted for something, you know? I had a lot of that stuff happen, but the times when I probably actually should have gotten arrested because I was doing something not necessarily injurious or whatever, but, you know, technically illegal, climbing on bridges and, you know, playing on railroad tracks on the bridge and doing all kinds of, climbing on buildings. I mean, I did all kinds of crazy shit when I was younger. But, yeah, I mean, all the times when I realistically, somebody should have said something, no, no, nothing happened. I got away with it. It's kind of funny, though. <laughs> you'll, have them, you'll have them calling out to... Uh, uh, Stop the statute of limitations on on petty crimes and stuff, Rev. You need to, yep. yeah. You need to swear out a disclosure. You know, if they want to come looking for me, they can track my fucking cell phone and figure out exactly where I'm sitting. I don't have a physical address. You know, I don't use the post office. You know what I mean? Yeah, you want to come talk to me? Come talk to me. I mean, give them the schedule first. You can't use hearsay in a court of law anyway, correct? And if you heard it on the radio, you heard me say it, so it's hearsay, right? Right. And, and not just that, you need to give them your fee schedule as well, Rob. Make sure that you make it fun for everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to be getting that getting that uh, sent out. Well, as the executor, you can go into court now and, and tell them, shit, your, your uh, estate there is guilty, and you believe the fine should be even more than it. They've determined crap. As long as you're going to pay me. Yeah, yep, yep. Well, and, and that was another thing, too. And I, 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 I remember going through this with several different people, and it never really got anywhere. But when you go into court, you know, the, the judge is acting as the trustee, and you're the beneficiary. But he tricks you into being the trustee and letting him be the beneficiary. And right, that, by being your executor. Because he's right. protecting you from yourself and you're paying him to do so. Right, and that's how he gets paid. But if I go in and I can and if I can I can get him to admit that he's the trustee and that I'm the beneficiary, then I get the money from whatever no, I'm being no, no, you only get a small strip and your benefit is you get to go to jail to protect you from yourself. So you got to stop claiming the benefit. Uh, the um, beneficium is the benefit. Okay, if you accept the beneficium, you're you're invoking what they call a privilege in blacks. The privilege is beneficium absent and endi. And what you do is you invoke the privilege to abstain from being the heir. As a beneficiary, you are invoking your privilege privilege of abstaining to be the heir. So let that sink in because you're establishing that executor position. So your executor is being paid to protect you. Any fine, any fee, any charge, you're paying your executor to protect you. Now, once you come in as the executor, they can pay me all they want to. Right. I, I'd he, like to increase the fine, Your Honor. I believe my estate is freaking guilty as all hell, and I think his fine should be two thousand or two million dollars because I'm the, now the executor. You need to pay me those fees, and I'll protect the estate. You know, you have to get into the mindset of the executor and realize how important that is. Once you're the executor of your estate, they have to pay you to protect the estate. So it's not likely they're going to charge the estate with anything. It's not likely they're going to privateer your vessel. And then when you combine that with the fee schedule that says we're open for business, if you would like to injure me, it's going to cost you $33 billion. You're wrapping them up in bonded states. 
Right. That's right. how you create the bond. A bond is a credit transaction. A bond is a credit transaction. Right. So once you implicate the fee schedule, you have an outstanding balance now. Um, this attorney has an out, outstanding balance of $33 billion. So we rebonded that case just with that outstanding balance. It's the game of risk. Right, this right. It's the game of risk. Okay, your estate or the dead body, the thing, the res, that thing is being bet on. It's a right. game of risk. That thing is a continent. If you look at it from the from the rules of the game of risk, you need to take the continent, you need to walk away with it and start charging and renting it out. They're no longer your pimp. Now, you can pimp out your, your own estate as much as you want to, whatever you're willing to do. And like I said, they can beat me. They can do whatever they want to, but they're going to pay $33 billion for it. Yeah, yeah. That was just something that I had come across uh, about, I don't know, six or eight months ago. Uh, some people were doing the whole uh, equity and liability and all that and with the trust and... Uh, I mean, I totally understand where you're coming from, but I figured I'd better throw that in there if anyone was uh, anyone was curious and following that line of thinking. Because it makes sense when you're listening to it, but the way you explain it was being, you don't want to be the beneficiary. No, so. no, you're abstaining your right to be the heir. And, and right. once you come back in as the heir, there's nobody in there to intercede in your inheritance. Now you right. get your inheritance that was promised to you back in 1666 when they lost all your paperwork. You went missing. You haven't come in and claimed the estate. You n you never came in as the executor and said that body's mine. So right. since the birth record and the and the birth certificate, it's been the other fathers. It's belonging to the executor that they have down at the courthouse or the governor, which is your executor that's protecting you to death via um, federal emergency management acts. Right. Gives no gives whole new meaning to the term free range human, huh? Absolutely, and, and you know, farm is actually spelled capital P F A R M here on this farm because it's run by pharmaceutical companies, it's run by the psychological industry, it's run by the medical industry and the legal industry. These are business ventures. These are business ventures. Once you lay down your fee schedule, you are offering them the chance to contract with you. You are giving them free will now to contract with you. Right. Allow them to. It's going to cost them more than they can ever make right. if they'd like uh, to contact with us any longer. We had a question from uh, Zietz. Have, have you actually had them pay out yet? No, we just laid this down this last week. Um, so far, there's no argument, but the, the ASHAT was trying to post us again. We said, no, we've dissented. We've lawfully dissented. We've claimed um, now on the uh, Treaty of Amity um, commerce and navigation and what happened was that they're violating so many of their own laws by privateering us including geneva convention um we've already dissented we've expatriated with the forgiveness doc and repatriated under a new house we're no longer in the house of representatives we're no longer in the house of representatives and at this time because we've dissented we're no longer under corporate governance Geneva Convention of 1929 allows the corporations to hold you prisoner of war because you don't have a government. Your government went, went bankrupt. Right. right. And yep. so you need to expatriate from the corporate governance and repatriate under, um, under your own house. When you establish the temporary post location, you are establishing a fort. That is what a post is. You are establishing now a sovereign fort. This is a fortress, and under their laws, they cannot come into the fortress. This is the United States now. This, this is a post. This is a temporary post location. This is a fort. Do not enter into my fort. Here's my fee schedule if you would like to come aboard my vessel. Right, right. Uh, can you be considered foreign, or will they consider you foreign? Is the Absolutely question. not. The, the definition of a sovereign state is one that is adhering to public law. The definition of a foreign state under 28 U.S.C. 97, that's the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, is a state that's acting under um, acts of commerce and private acts. That is the delineation between a foreign state and a sovereign state. I only adhere to public law. If you're going to harm me, you will pay the fees to do so. I'm not dinking around. 
You can right. go out there and run through a stop sign. You can go whatever. But I only adhere to public law. That makes me a sovereign state. You only right. adhere to uniform commercial code, which is a commercial act. These right, are commercial right. acts. And so that makes them a foreign state. Now, under 28 U.S.C. 13, um, uh, 1338, you're coming in against the foreign state now. Those are those that that allows you an action against a foreign state. Now, Rod Class is doing such amazing work. However, however, he has gone in as a citizen. He's a certified citizen of D.C. as a private attorney general. In November, in November, last November, Congress came in and they altered the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. And what they've done is they said, no, it's no longer available for a citizen to sue a foreign state. Rod Class needs to drop his citizenship and come in as the United States so that he can facilitate on what he's acted upon. Okay, um, okay I have a question okay. on that. Are you, are you familiar with what he has done with uh, uh, yeah, getting, his, well, getting his statements uh, stating that the Department of Motor Vehicles and all that are not public officials? Absolutely, they're foreign states. Each county is a foreign state. They're not sovereign. However, he can't sue them because he's a citizen. He needs right. to drop his citizenship. He needs to drop that little piece of paper, and I know that that's exciting for him. I know that that means a lot to him as a private attorney general, but as a citizen, he's not able to come up against a foreign state or collect on any judgment. He right. needs to come into the United States and sue them as foreign states. They right. have no immunity. They have no immunity under the sovereign, uh, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. They have okay. absolutely no immunity, and they have no sovereignty. Okay, now that was the question earlier. Um, if I, being, you know, sovereign, you know, uh, living being on the land, well, you know, how you want to put it, um, I am the United States. Now, yes. all the corporations, everybody are foreign to me. So, yes, they're, they're under the definition of a foreign state. The definition of a foreign state is one that is ad, acting under acts of commerce and private acts. Private acts are just executive orders. So well, they have, yeah. no, they have no sovereignty and they have no immunity whatsoever. Right. You want to see a judge freak out, walk in and say, uh, I'm convening this as a court of public law? <laughs> Absolutely. I know some I know someone who did that, and the judge literally was standing there, slamming his gavel, saying, You're not going to convene that here in my courtroom! Absolutely, just, because they're an administrative law court. All they do, all they can do under the um, Declaration of Independence is administer you. That's their function. And under the bankruptcy, these judges have sworn an oath to discharge their duty by throwing you in there to discharge the bankruptcy. That is their bankruptcy. It is not your bankruptcy. All right, and now that would go back on to your 11th Amendment, right? Uh, I don't I don't usually pay attention that much to the Constitution unless it applies. Uh, well, I'd have the, to go look at it. The judges, the 11th Amendment was, if I remember right, was... Uh, uh, what eventually they did the foreign sovereign immunities thing for was because the judges were no longer able to adjudicate uh, law, equity, you know, uh, controversy, blah, 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 whatever. Um, that, was, that was later after the, um, um, wasn't that along with the uh, Judiciary Acts and all that shit? The um, Commerce Clause allows them to facilitate business. I think that was uh, Article 3, Section right. 1 or something. And, right. um, the, 11th, the 11th Amendment, because if you go back, it's um, Article 3, I think, says that the uh, the courts shall have the power to you know adjudicate law, blah, 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 whatever. And then, like what, 20 years later or something, the courts were so corrupted that they actually passed the amendment to amend Article 3, stating that the judges in the courts did not have the power to adjudicate law. And then right. that's when they stepped in with the administrative and everything else. Right, and then that's where um, 
that's that was probably around the time then of the 1832 nullification proclamation that Andrew Jackson passed out. And he said that um, if you go into court, if you're trying to appeal a decision based on statutory or legislative decisions, you're going to be held in contempt. You're not allowed to appeal the case. So what we're seeing is is all of these people in the appeal, uh, uh, at the appeals level, they're, they've been in appeal for 17, 18 years. They have no idea that they're being held in contempt. They're just forking over the money to their attorneys. That's right. a form of contempt stemming from the 1832 Nullification Proclamation. And what my process does is we don't argue statute or legislation. I argue evidence. So we, we maintain the evidence on the court record. So if you have to appeal, um, so far uh, none of us have had to appeal any decisions. But if you have to, they can't pull the 1832 Nullification Proclamation on you because you're not appealing a, a statutory le legislative decision. You're... You're appealing the attorney in the black dress's decision because the only ability of a judge under judicial canon is to see evidence and rule accordingly. They don't have the ability of a trier of fact. A trier of fact was created by Uniform Commercial Code. A fact can be an allegation um, repeated more often than one time. You know, there's a very, very, very an absolute um, opposite um, definition between fact and evidence and people need to be aware of these things you don't want to put examples on the court record which is an exhibit you don't want testimony you don't want an affidavit on the court record because you want to provide the the ability of a judge to be in the courtroom if you if there's no evidence on the court record which is exhibits and testimony and and um affidavits and everything else you're allowing and consenting to a trial of fact because all they're seeing is evidence, or, uh, sorry, examples, um, voices, whatever else. And, and under the Declaration of Independence, they can't hear you because you're in a pending state. You're really not in front of them. You're just an infant, under the, according to the um, Treatise on the Law of Infants. And so they, 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 all they can do is administrate you or administer the estate. So once you come in with evidence, you're revealing. You're revealing and... and you know, we've talked about this before, but, I mean, there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing outside of truth and God. And right now, we're walking through Revelation. We're witnessing the Revelation. We're presenting evidence onto the court record. We're revealing God. We're revealing the truth. And we're bringing everything hidden out of a hidden state. The word apocalypse comes from the Greek words apo and um, kalyptine, which means to bring forth from a hidden state. It doesn't mean anything bad. Um, television programming has taught us to fear revelation, has taught us to fear an apocalypse. And it, it, it is the most beautiful thing I've ever witnessed. This is the most... Um, amazing time uh, I mean it's just it's absolutely astounding at what's happened um, what we're revealing what we're actually doing and we're bringing everybody out of this state of bondage we're bringing everybody forward so that they can be, be living the, the courts no longer exist once everybody's alive and they realize that they'll be living the court no longer exists. We don't harm each other. We never harmed each other. They told us we did so that they could come in and protect us. They told us they would protect us so that we would be patriotic to them. Jesus said, don't call anything else your father. And here we are, we're patriotic to the county, we're patriotic to the state, we're patriotic to a country, we're patriotic to a damn flag. These flags are pirate Colors, bars laid down on their sides. Well, what they do is they capture you under them. The American flag is was not designed by Betsy Ross. The American flag stems from the British East Indian Trading Corporation. That is a pirate color. Right, you are and the other captured. Yeah, the other thing is, is you know, it has to be a certain size. It has to be you know, whatever. And the thing is, is that the flag that everyone thinks is the United States flag, that's the war flag. Absolutely. The, the peace you, flag. 
right? Yeah. And, and everybody's been taught to look up to it and pledge, pledge allegiance to that thing. You are standing under pirate color and you have been captured within the action of patriotism. So you've been consenting to your capture by being patriotic and calling it your father. You ask it to be um, the trustee when you take a benefit, Social Security, welfare, housing, free daycare, free schooling. Stop patronizing it. Schooling does not have to cost anything. Um, you need to wake up. Everybody needs to wake up. Everything's not going to fall to shit. We are the only, only biology on this planet. This ass backwards. We we glorify cars. We we name them. We 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 pledge allegiance to a flag that's capturing us. We go into court and we ask a judge to determine our matters. We we we. It's just sick. It is sick and twisted. Now. Everybody out there listening needs to ask himself, would a lion do this? If, if an attorney came up to a lion and he said, well, that's illegal, what would the lion do? Agree with him? Uh, no, he'd probably have a snack. Absolutely. And if they came up to the lion and said, oh, we think you're abusive, we're going to take your kids off of you, what would the lion do? Probably have a snack. What the hell are we doing? Um, getting fucked in the ass. And we're allowing our children to be kidnapped. We're allowing yep. ourselves to be kidnapped. Yep. We're allowing ourselves to live in the action of bail, ballism, piracy. We no longer view ourselves as any other biology. We no longer view ourselves as animals. Animals don't have etiquette. They don't eat with a proper fork and a spoon and a freaking cup with their pinkies hanging out. Animals don't do that. But humans do, and it makes us beneficial to politics or politically correct. If we can be nailed and, and told that we're bad, we can only do that if we have a title. You're a bad boy. You're a bad girl. Right. You're a bad mom. You're a bad dad. And so we're always earning the right to be. Lions do not do that. Chickens don't even do that. Cows <laughs> don't do that. You know, you, you have to weigh and measure all of these things because it's absolutely insane and ask backwards what we've done. You, know, you, you bring up a good point, and, and I have to put this out there. When I was with my last girlfriend, and we ended up at going through a bunch of bullshit and breaking up. At one point, she was talking to a psychologist, and he told her to go home and stand in front of the mirror and look at herself and say, I am a very, very bad girl, and I like it, and it's okay. And she told me about that, and I laughed so fucking hard, I cannot even tell you. I bet it's disgusting, and that's and that's what it all is. It's psychology. Okay, we're the we're the only biology on this planet that can be told that we're bad, so we earn the right to be good. Right. You can't tell a cow. You can't tell the cow that it's being a cow badly. You can't tell a <laughs> lion that it's being a lion badly. Right. It, you know, it, it, we're the only biology stupid enough to actually do this, and we think that we're the smartest animal on the planet. It's bullshit. You're the one that's in chains. Yep. You're the one that comes into court and, and argues that you rolled through a stop sign and somehow you injured it. You know, instead of turning on the on that freaking farmer and, and indicting him and telling him, no, you're not going to farm me, you ass. Yep, yep. So we have a couple of questions before I forget about them. Um, the first one is, I've been evicted from my home due to foreclosure. What steps do I take to regain control of my home? Uh, file the two admission statements first and immediately. Right, and, and what those are is they're, they're proof of life or evidence of your life and be living. However, you need to do the forgiveness doc and get out of the franchise. You need right. to do the um, executor doc, and then we have an equitable estoppel. Now, what most don't realize is that they've the dead hand or um, the dead pledge is a mortgage. The word mortgage means dead pledge. And if you go to your mortgage documents, you will find usually a borrower's covenant. In that borrower's covenant, it says your estate's been seized, but you have the right to move around and convey the property. There's two different properties you're talking about. They're not talking about the, the square one that's been seized. They're talking about your body and your children's bodies and their children's bodies. They have been seized by that document. You need to obliterate that document because this is why you're being criminalized. 
This is why your children are being stolen off of you by child protection. This is why you're sick and in the hospital. Because of that dead pledge. You allowed that bank to seize the estate. They're going to manipulate and administer that estate. They have to get that money. They're generating revenue upwards of $33 billion per case, per account. Right. right. Now, the, the, the sickest thing is that the bank did not own that property until you went into the bank and bought it. That was your domain. This is your domain. Nobody has a lodial title to any part of the ground. Nobody has the patentability on the ground. That is your domain. When you go to the bank and you buy a piece of property, you are authorizing that that property was theirs to begin with. You need to obliterate these documents. You need to get out of this system and you need to get out now. Oh, okay. I have a question. Talking about patents, because uh, I know Turtle actually has a patent for land that was given to her family way back in the day and had been stolen from them, but they still have the original patent. Right, and and what happened was they cannot. You cannot put a patent on new uh, on old things. Those land patents are on the estate, and what happens is you go now to the bank, and there's a land patent on that estate. It doesn't have to be yours until you walk in there and tell them that you are that estate. So you're assessing your value at that time. And you're reassessing that original patent and putting it on your body, your productivity, your production value. That patent, that land patent was by executive order. It's signed by a president. But it means that you are reassessing the value of your body, your productivity. Or what they call GDP, gross domestic product. The reason they can project and guarantee the gross domestic product is because it's you. And you're asking it to reevaluate you. You're reassessing the value on that estate when you go in to get a mortgage on that land. That's a dead pledge. You're calling yourself dead. And you're saying, take me. Stop doing that. You need to obliterate those documents. You need to obliterate everything that they've done. Get get rid of it. Okay, next question. Um, have you seen Void Light? Say that again. Uh, it says, ask Tammy what she makes of this new Void Mortgage site. And the link is down below here. I don't know, have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. I haven't looked into it. Um, I will later, and then I can comment on it in the classrooms and everything after some research. But um, you know, there's there's a lot of disinformation, and there's a lot of bullshit, and they're going to offer you what's called averment. So each time you go into court, they offer you something positive. Okay, so um, say you've been falsely accused of child sexual abuse, they're going to give you an opportunity to spend 20 years in prison, or just for you today, if you sign on this dotted line, you can have a finding, you can register as a sex offender in the next 20 years. You know, and, and you're likely to sign on that dotted line because you're facing 20 years. This is always duress. Yep. But you yep. were falsely accused in the first place. Don't sign the document. Indict them. Indict the false accuser. Right. Right. You know, and, and you need to um, stop accepting their averment. They'll promise you the whole world, but it's already yours. It's already your domain. You need to take it back. As an executor, you need to take it back and say no more. I'm not under corporate governance. My community is not under corporate governance. And we, we know so many people that aren't awake. They're not aware. They're being subjugated. They're being used and, and mistaken everywhere. We need to act on their behalf too. Just recently with the crap they had in New York with the um, um, uh, Hurricane Sandy, the Red Cross went in there, and you had citizens, citizens, they called themselves citizens, they were crying and crying and saying, the Red Cross isn't here yet. Go look at the 1864 Geneva Convention, please, and realize that the Red Cross only picks up prisoners of war. That is their function. If you invite them to your neighborhood, you are consenting to being a prisoner of war. When yeah. the Red Cross shows up in a devastated area, 
because they're the foundling hospital for prisoners of war, you can guarantee that they created the hurricane or they created the devastation. You need to research these things. Right. It's right. the scariest thing I've ever seen because here you have American, quote, citizens patriotic to this country. They're being preyed on by the Red Cross. They look at Palestinian um, uh, issues. They look at Islamic issues. They look over there and they see what's happening there. They have no idea that it's happening right here in their own country. They were picking yep. off prisoners of war. These people out there, I was watching... Um, one of the news reports, and, and this poor guy, he's saying, he's saying they came in and they put red stickers all over my house, and they're condemning us and everything else. Okay, the color red they use as a control function. And then something really profound came out of his mouth. He said, there's no damage. There's no structural damage. And the minute they said that, one of the anchormen came on as an ambassador for that community, never having met those people before. And he spoke on their behalf and said they're just devastated. They need our help. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that. Oh. Imagine that because you're being represented every time you turn around. Right. You are being represented. Your voice is coming out of somebody else's mouth. And you need to take that voice back and make it come out of yours. Make it come out of your hand. Right. You need I, to take this back. Take back the divest power from Congress. Now, you were told... In the Constitution, power is vested in con Congress. Power can only be vested. Who vested it? You did. Divest that power and revest your title. Right. You right. are the United States. You need to take this out of the hands of Congress because they're they're whipping your ass and they're administrating you to death. Right. Um, I think Turtle had a comment there, maybe. Say that again. I think Turtle had a comment. No? Okay, never mind. Um, well, we got about 15 minutes left, and my, my brain is spinning. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. You're just on fire tonight. So, I mean, is there anything else that you want to throw out there? Well, we um, recently, when, when I ran into Dave, he came around and, and uh, we got the book done. We got all of the audios done. They were on the Dropbox now. Um, anybody who wants to get a hold of me can uh, get me on Skype. It's T. Pepperman, all lowercase. Um, you can email me at TammyK23 at Hotmail.com. But also, we have Dave now. <laughs> and it, it's been just amazing um, to have it spread out a little bit more than because I was so spread thin and I, I got sick recently again but um, it, it is just amazing and um, get with us on Skype we're, we're doing really well um, it, it's just something else you know this is an amazing journey and we all need to stand up for each other and, and that's what's happening now you know we had so many houses and, and um, people aren't aware of their actual authority and they're scared to death of these pirates and privateers and and they've kept them in a state of Stockholm Syndrome so long that they have no idea what they can actually do you know what they can actually do with their own power with their own authority and we need to get back to that but before that time we found people that are willing to stand up on others behalf and it has been the most amazing thing to witness because here we have everybody grabbing each other they're hugging each other they're being with each other and they're directing these the corporate governments they're getting them out of their lives and it's something that I never dreamt I would be able to see in my lifetime because of the situation that has occurred um, it has just been absolutely amazing to witness yeah it's a pretty amazing time to be alive right now i mean when i was growing up i always thought oh fucking shit nothing ever happened it's boring you know i wish i was you know japan in the 1500s or you know blah 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 whatever some other time other than now but now that i'm actually here watching what's going on it's like you know 
I'm happy being here, watching what's going on. I don't really want to, you know, have been born some other time. It would have been interesting to live, you know, Japan in the 1500s or whatever. But with everything that's going on in the world, I mean, there's, there's, it's just going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing, just like you said, you know. It's all going to be changing right in front of our eyes. And it's, it's either going to be, it's either going to be, you know, the jack boot on the back of the neck forever, or it's going to be freedom and, and honesty. I mean, that's our choice. Either slavery or actually take control and live your life. I mean, that's, you know, that's it. And we're seeing that now. I mean, the freedom that comes with realizing your authority is, is absolutely amazing. And it's not very far away for those that don't think they have it in them or, or are fearful in any way. It's so close. It's right at your fingertips. All you have to do is stand. Yep, absolutely. Um, ten minutes left. Turtle, is there anything that you want to mention? Um, plug for any of the shows coming up? Oh, I need to mention that I am going to have Stefan, the director of the Bigfoot County 2012 movie that I am in, on the show on Sunday night, hopefully. Uh, we're still working out exactly how we're going to get him on, either phone or Skype. But um, So that's coming up for Sunday night. Uh, um, you want to plug any shows you're going to be on or anything, Tammy? Well, I never know um, for sure until the last minute, but, um, I mean, we've just been doing really well. I don't, what happened to Turtle? I know I had some of the students were asking about, um, I'm here. Yeah, the, the students were asking about um, the Corps of Engineers and, and um, geology and, and, you know, the medical industry, and, and I love um, how you present that. Um, have you, do you have anything that you've been working on as to um, natural health or self-sufficiency? Oh, yeah. We we try to tackle a little bit of it here on one of the shows uh, every week. And you know me. It's, it's what I'm mostly about. Um, I think the most important thing that if people are wanting to get back to their health, to keep one thing in mind, and that is nutrition. And you have one of the greatest tools for education at your fingertips. If you're listening on uh, line, then all you've got to do is suffering from an illness. If you are taking prescribed medication for an illness, uh, if you have a diagnosis, there are things that you can do. The best thing that you can do is to start doing a search and searching out. The, you find out the drug. You find out what the drug does, what it inhibits, what it uh, uh, helps. And then you go and you do a search to find out what these compounds are. It's a, it's a puzzle, but it gets you there. And I don't have the time to go through it all. But you go, you search out those compounds. You know what your disease is. Then you start doing a search on natural herbs and, and spices that can help these issues that you have and nine times out of ten you will have what you need in your spice cabinet you will have what you need at uh, in your refrigerator if you have uh, things like beans lentils things like this uh, spices like cayenne majorum um, uh, oregano uh, many many more spices honeys things like this these are actually uh, power packed little uh, natural nutrient balls you know and when they come into your system your system actually gets what it needs it actually gets the nutrition that it needs it doesn't need anything else your body's organic it was made simply to process nutrition okay that only comes from live vital foods it doesn't come from processed foods it doesn't come from chemicals it doesn't come from preservatives so if you can feed your body the right foods according to the illness that you have the chances of you receiving uh, uh, 
comfort if not cure is very probable because your body is dealing with what it knows you can't keep giving it a prescribed medication full of buffers and and uh, uh, toxins and shocking your system putting your immune system to sleep uh, attacking other tissues causing the body to send out uh, too many hormones of one too many enzymes of another this is what happens when you put something that is uh, synthetic in your body your body uh, will try its best to get rid of it so they trick your body by putting buffers in these medications so that every time your body tries to defend itself these buffers trick it into not and pretty soon your body's not functioning anymore and you're just getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker you know the way to combat that is through nutrition through nutrition and all the information you need is on the internet all you've got to do is do a search if you have a disease get out there search um, if you have diabetes there is a uh, several uh, sites that are really good one where they took five people with uh, severe di diabetes uh, insulin dependent and uh, obese and they took them to a farm and for I think it was um, maybe six months maybe less I can't remember but they had them eat all their food raw now that's not including meats it was a vegetable diet not only did they lose weight but they were no longer insulin dependent that's how powerful food and nutrition is it's what you actually need and I didn't mean to monopolize the time Tammy but you got me on it you know and there I go but um I just wanted to let you know also Tammy that you've got some really good uh, comments from people who are very appreciative for what you do and uh, are, are very uh, loyal to you and and wish you well from the chat just wanted to say that thank you sister and you too um a lot of my students aren't aware of your show where you talk about this more um, in depth. And um, maybe if you can plug it so they know where you're at and where to find you, they can listen um, to what's going on. Okay, well, I'm on these changing times, radio.ning.com. And that is times with a Z or a Z, depending where in the world you are. And that's these changing times times radio dot ning dot com there you go cat does that so much better but um i do round tables on uh, saturday at 2 p.m i do the brain gym on sundays at 2 p.m so you can catch me there right now i'm not doing my turtle talk at the moment because as usual uh things at, on these changing times is always changing <laughs> so uh I'll get in there somewhere, but uh, we always touch on that and, and other uh, self-sufficiency and community-based solutions on, on our Saturdays and our, and our Sunday shows, so it'd be really good, you know, to tune in. And Tammy, anytime you're, you you want to come on, you're, you're more than welcome, you know, we'll get you on, so. Thank you, guys. And please, please keep us posted uh, on on new developments and things as you go through this. All right, I will. Um, and thank you, guys. I love you guys so much. We didn't get to hear the roosters today. It must have been the rain. Oh uh, yeah, they were. It's already dark by six o'clock here, so they were already in bed. Yeah. But, uh, I had a question from Zeets, and I forgot that we have an extra like nine minutes because we missed some time earlier, and he wants. <laughs> opinion on agenda 21 well that's what everything is i mean before it was called agenda 21 it was just called the declaration of independence where you're just in a pending state so they're going to administrate you um in any means that you need to be administered that's more beneficial to politics or political agenda that's what protocols are um everything else so as you're being administrated um you'll notice that uh, the people that are over 50, uh, your production value starts to lag. And, and you can read about this over on um, in, uh, economics. So, like, if you go to Mises, you'll, you, you can study yourself as human beings and, and find out that um, after the age of 50, when your production starts lagging, 
what happens. The statistics are all there. You start getting sick. And so they're administering you now. Because the usufruct can never be diminished as to its capacity, caput means head. That's the head of cattle. And so the usufruct will never be diminished. So after your work um, is done and your production value starts to leg as to your employment or consumption value as a consumptive good, they're going to switch over into the medical industry. <clears throat> and that's if you're insured. Um, if you're not insured, you're going to find yourself criminalized because they need to they need to generate revenue in one way or another. Um, there's only three forms of production. Taxation and consumption is the first one. That's a third of the GDP value. The second form is medicine, psychology, and death. That's a third of the GDP value. The third one is criminalization. That's a third of the GDP value. And so if they're not ringing you in by family court, psychology, morality, whatever else, they're going to criminalize you or you will find yourself dying or or with some chronic disease, because what you're eating is causing that, what you're ingesting already. And so you'll go to the doctor and you don't feel very well, for example, and so they'll give you an antibiotic. Well, the majority of what they're giving out, it's called Cipro or Bactrim. It's called trimeth sulfate, okay? So you rush right out and you get on this antibiotic. You have side effects of this antibiotic that makes you throw up and everything else, and you're thinking, well, maybe it's a penicillin. No, it's a chemotherape chemotherapeutic antibiotic. And you can find this research at your government, at the FDA, um, within their documentation. And so when you go out and you rush out and you get on this antibiotic, it's making you sicker. So then you go back into the doctor and you say, well, man, I'm having side effects. And they're like, well, you must be allergic to Cipro. Let me give you Bactrim. It's the same damn medication. They need to have you sick. <clears throat> the AIDS virus is the use of chemotherapeutic antibiotics. Because the minute you have a cold, you're going to rush out to the doctor. He's going to put you on this. You're going to have side effects. He's going to give you another one and another one. Lower doses here, higher doses here. But at the end of like three years, you're going to be diagnosed with full-blown AIDS because you've been on chemotherapy for the last three years. You need to step back and measure what you're doing. Use logic. Use reason. If you have a runny nose, figure out what's going to stop it from running. If you have a cold, deal with it yourself. Study. Study hard. Wow. Yeah, and Tammy, if I could break in too, I just want people to know, you know, it, many people learned that um, the flu scare that they did have where everyone thought that the swine flu was going to come and take them out and then it was N1H1 which was even scarier and so they had to either get the flu shot or or run the risk of, of uh, death you know well what happened was was not probably by now 90 percent of the population has had uh, the N1H1 and uh, for the majority of the population, it's the flu. It's the flu that you get every year, maybe a little bit different, but it's the flu. And if you continually try to get rid of your chance of having the flu, the weaker your system becomes to the next flu. That is your body's way of, Im uh, of immu immunizing itself. Right. It, it has to develop the antibodies. It has to develop the the uh, ability to fight it back. Just wanted to say that. Right, and that was their downfall. You know, they expected a high death rate from H1N1. H is hydrogen, one part, and N is nitrogen, one part. When your body is exposed to a sporous bacteria, such as anthrax, your body metabolizes variants on hydrogen and nitrogen. Right now, you're dealing with H1N5, which is hydrogen one part, nitrogen five parts. These are gases that your body's making because it has been introduced with bacterial influence. Now, when you go back, their death rates were way lower than they ever projected because they were dosing everybody with anthrax up until the 70s. Now, what happened when we had the anthra or the swine flu outbreak? Nobody was dying that were born before the 1970s. If you go to the anthrax hearings uh, at Yale Law Library, you will find out why. 
They were dosing everybody back up until 1970. They were dosing everybody with anthrax. We already have an immunity to that. Every year they dose you with a low dose of anthrax. Anthrax is found in sheep carcasses. It is not hard to manufacture, especially when you're in the United States Incorporated. Now, everybody needs to go back to the World Courts, 1928, and look up the company at Churzow. What sparked the, the um, Polish invasion was the Bayer Corporation. The Bayer Corporation came in as, as the government of Germany. Germany used to be a republic, just like here, until they nationalized. The Bayer came in and they indemnified, which means promised to pay, Poland. And they had to off a whole bunch of people in order to rectify what was going on. Nobody was producing. During Bolshevik Russia, they employed feminism. So all of these females and elderly and children were all on welfare, corporate welfare theory. That was the first implication of feminism. That was the first model. And it worked. Hitler then came in and offed all of the females that were on welfare, all of the elderly that was um, stripping off of the, the medical insurance policies, all of the children that were on welfare and social services. They were no longer necessary as product. Everybody needs to wake up. Everybody needs to realize that this is happening again. And they need to stand as one. Because we can do this. We're not losing. We're absolutely not losing. Obama, the other day on, on the White WhiteHouse.gov, he came out with a, with a notice to everybody and said, well, pff, we need to start offing each other. You need to go to the White House because he's, he's in uproar. He just put an insider threat law into play, or insider threat rules into play, and said, you know, if you're working next to anybody and they're, and they're not with us, maybe they should be outed. You know, why is this guy having to do this? He's nervous as all get out. I wonder why. Something's made him really, really nervous. And we all know what this is. Indeed. And he just called out to start cannibalizing the administrative level, which was the most beautiful thing I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I don't know. I got a friend who's like, Obama's the man, and he's going to solve the problems, and I think that he's just a bloody puppet that's following the same game plan that everybody else has been following for Absolutely. the last 50 years. Yeah. Uh, and everybody's accepted it. He's the gray Hitler. You know, Hitler came in on a platform of Nazism and racism and everything else. Well, Obama's not black, he's not white, he's not, he's not Christian, and he's not Muslim. He's gray. And so he's so neutralized, he can do anything he wants to us, and everybody's accepting of it. I'm not, goddammit. Absolutely not. I mean, this is, you know, these are the, quote, voting populace. People don't realize they didn't get a vote. Right. Regimes run elections. Regimes maintain elections. Well, did you... Actual... Sorry, Tammy, did you see that they reported 99% of every district in Pennsylvania voted for Obama? Yes, I mean, all those dead people. I mean, how, how is that possible? They said 55% showed up at the polls. There's not even that much populace left. If you look at the death toll that, that has reached the, the United States of America, quote, you will find that there's not even that many people to vote anymore. We've been being offed. You know, yep. you thought, people don't realize... Okay, they see Ulrich, and they see that he wrote the population bomb. They don't see the compendium. Population matters. They don't see Simon. They don't see John Holdren and what he was doing back in the 60s. They don't see the, the uh, Georgia Guidestones. They don't see these things. This is Johnny Holdren and his peer set. Johnny Holdren is your science czar. He's in the administration right now. Everybody needs to pay attention to what old Johnny's doing. You know, and they're, and they're not paying attention. They're, they're thinking that this... Population bomb is in the past tense. Go to the Rockefeller Center on Population Policy. It's all there. It's all there. They have to off you. Now okay. everybody needs to start accepting this and, and dealing with it because uh, I don't feel like being off and I don't want my children administrated. You know, so we need to start charging them. Give them a fee schedule. You can do anything you want to, but it's going to cost you some money here. Right, right. But the problem is, is getting the people away from their Thursday night football games and Sunday football games and Monday night football games and and yeah, I mean absolutely television programming. That's the number one 
uh, killer of anybody. And, and they need to realize, they tell you it is television programming. You are being programmed. Television just, programming. Just, just look at a football game. Uh, does it remind you of anything? Maybe the Coliseum? Maybe the gladiatorial games? I mean, it's the same shit. I mean, let me out of fucking the movie Groundhog Day. Seriously, let me the fuck out. God damn. Right, but you need to make that a directive. We're not we're not asking them to do anything for us anymore. We're no longer requiring of their their services, um, but we are offering ours. And and people have to realize your power is is absolutely powerful. You're the one that vested power in Congress. Congress means with transgression, with transgression. You've been vesting power in Congress, which means with transgression. Who are they transgressing upon? You did nope. this. You delegated your authority. Now you need to revest your title and divest power from them. That is up to you. You need to find your authority and act on it. Govern yourself accordingly, as Dave says. And on that note, I think we are about out of time. Is that about where we're at, Turtle? Yep, we are about there. Be well, and I love you guys. Thank you for having me on. Tammy, yep. please come back soon. Thank you. Anytime you want to come on, you're more than welcome. Thank In you. In fact, if you ever wanted a radio slot, I bet you we could get you one. Okay, I'll tell the. We'll we'll get it worked out soon. Um, I know that the things are finally slowing down where um, I'm able to breathe now. I I I am so thankful to everybody. I mean, Dave has just taken so much. Um, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah, that's why I haven't uh, bothered you very much. I've followed you, but I've seen how busy you've been. Uh, you've been doing great work, and thank you. Everybody's stepping up to the plate. I mean, it's just been like almost to the point of overwhelming. Sometimes I'm so much in awe and speechless. I mean, it, I, I wish that I could. It, it's hard to define what's happening now and how much in chaos the, the corporate government actually is. Um, you know, you, you can watch the media or you can watch the alternative media and, and find out some things that you, you have no clue that's going on. They, they are in absolute chaos. They are scared of your authority. They are scared of you. Um, they're trying to rectify and maintain the same system, but they're not able to anymore. And at this point, they're just now realizing that the best bet is to cannibalize each other because that's the only way they're going to generate revenue. Yep, yep. And I wanted to mention... That did you guys hear? Spain just added hemp oil to its list of the top five things to treat and cure cancer. Wow! Yep, that is beautiful. We were just watching a documentary on that the other night. On I think it was on YouTube, um, speaking about um, hemp oil and 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 things like that, and how to derive it out of the hemp plants. If anybody wants to. You that I'm sure that they can just Google it or, or go to YouTube. I can't remember the, the name of the uh, video, but um, the next time we're together in, in one place, and I'll I'll have that information. Yeah, there's a great video on YouTube of uh, a guy who his son had like yeah, a year and a half old had a massive brain tumor, you know, hospital or whatever. So he he takes his son out of the hospital. And starts treating him with hemp oil. And like six or eight months later, the tumor's gone. Or not affecting the kid anymore. And he's up running around and walking and doing whatever. I mean, yeah. Just go and do the research on it. And on that note, I really have to close up the show. Uh, so this has been Beyond the Looking Glass. Our special guest tonight has been Tammy Pepperman. And you will probably be able to find this on YouTube in the next couple of days from Bono's Entertainment. And, and we have been on These Changing Times Radio, .com. Thank you to Tammy and thank you, Turtle. As always, you've been an awesome uh, producer. And on that note, uh, Turtle, do you have any last comment? Live, love, laugh, and stand strong, everybody. All right. And good night. Have a great night, Tammy. You too, be well.